Hello everyone and welcome to the Knitter's Kitchen. This is um, my very first podcast episode. And it's kind of crazy. I just really felt like telling people about stuff I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Um, and yeah, instead of just putting stuff on Instagram and I take photos and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so here's a vlog um, from me. And I hope you guys will like it. I've got a lot of stuff to tell you about, a lot of stuff um, to show you as well. So I'm gonna put in some um, footage from dyeing stuff. I've been doing baking stuff. I mean, it's not the kitchen without food, right? So yeah, and, and other stuff that might be going on. So yeah, I hope you'll enjoy it and uh, Let's get started. A little introduction of me. Um, I'm Juka. I am the woman behind Knitter's Kitchen, which you might have guessed already. Um, I'm mainly doing network design. It's not my full-time job. I do have a day job on the side, which is in, um, or on the side. It's a day job. It's my main job. Um, it's in digital marketing, which means that when I get back from work, I don't feel like doing any digital marketing, so I'm really, really bad at like maintaining my own website and um, doing any digital marketing there. So I do want to start sending out a bit more like newsletters and stuff, but yeah, let's see if that's gonna happen. Um, yeah, so um, the whole yarn and, and um, design business is kind of a second job for me. It started out as a hobby. I've been knitting for ages, um, since I was a kid. Uh, so after I um, signed up for Ravelry, um, it, like all the inspiration just went up and I've been knitting constantly ever since. Um, so yeah, I started designing in 2011, um, it wasn't much in the beginning, but I've really grown with the task and I'm kind of, yeah, doing more designing now, almost never um, knitting by other people's patterns, which is kind of too bad because there's so much lovely stuff out there, so I really want to do more um, of that. Um, yeah, so um, the Knitter's Kitchen company is um, mainly to sell yarn and I like I dye some yarn it's not like the main interest I have so the dyeing doesn't like take up that much and I don't do that much promoting of it which is too bad I guess um, but it's really fun like I really like going down to my dyeing kitchen and put it put some yarn in some pots and put a bit of color in there as well and um, yeah I'm trying to repeat colorways but that doesn't always happen I mean it doesn't always come out the way it should so I've got the greatest respect for dyers who are actually able to repeat colorways perfectly because um, I'm not I'm I'm not able to do that so yeah but I, I hope you guys will join me in like my fun experiments with the yarn as well. I am uh, based in Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, I live in a house just outside of the city. Um, and I know there aren't like super many Danish podcasts in Danish um, about knitting. There are a couple. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do this one in English because that's kind of the language I'm using for well, I write my knitting patterns in English to start with. I might translate them into Danish, but I don't always do that. Um, and yeah, it kind of feels more natural to me to do this in English. My audience might also be more English than Danish, I guess. Let's see how that goes. So let me show you some knitting. Um, yeah, so finished objects, I've... Um, recently finished a shawl which is not my design for once I 
knitted by someone else's. Um, this is a shawl called <laughs> Blue Moon. <laughs> uh, I think it's Bloody Wed or something like that. It's Welsh. Um, it's designed by Carthen Rack of Triskelion Yarn, and I just I saw this shawl recently both um, on his Instagram, on Facebook, and also live at Ember Yarn Festival. And I just loved it. I mean, it's gorgeous, isn't it? So the main pattern on the body is like a Estonian echo flower lace, which is like my favorite lace ever. Oh yeah, sorry, didn't like snip out the center. I did weave them in, but yeah. It's, yeah, so as I mentioned, it's my favorite lace pattern and I've been using it for like shawls and bodies of my wedding dress as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's definitely not the last time I'm knitting this. Plus, in every pattern, it's knit differently. So there are like these subtle changes to it. And uh, Carthen's version is no exception. So I really like that border at the, at the, um, at the bottom of the shawl. Um, the only thing is, um, I'd like to note, and that's something like Carson and I discovered after um, I blocked this one, that the border is actually um, off by six stitches. So it's not supposed to look like, let me show if I can, see if I can show that properly. It's not supposed to be the, um, the little flower here going into, um, the leaf. Um, it's supposed to be um, that leaf actually being between the flowers. <laughs> Sorry, this is all mirrored, so it's kind of hard to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Lovely shawl. Um, I really love it. It's an amazing pattern, as always. And I'm translating it to Danish. That might be done at some point. Sorry, Carson, um, for that delay. But anyway, um, the yarn I used, I used um, Geilsk uh, Ham Oul, which is a Geilsk, it's a, a Danish brand. So this is wool and hemp, um, a mixture. I don't remember the percentages. I'll write that in there. Yes, so. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's lovely. It's warm. It's got a certain weight and drape to it, and I'm, I'm in love. <laughs> Let me show you projects that I'm actually working on. So knitting projects, anyway. Um. Yeah. So I am not working on anything. I haven't designed myself. So everything's like design sample or. Um, a couple of things. So first of all, let me pull this up. Um, I recently showed some photos of this sweater on Instagram. Um, it's called Bright Above Me and it's currently in testing. Well, the tech test ends today, so it will be live, I hope, during the next week or so. Um, so yeah, um, I'm knitting this and because I, I wanted a version in like blue and blue. Um, and I was dreaming about this while I was knitting the other one in the black and yellow. Um, but yeah, uh, the thing is when I'm knitting patterns, I always change something. So even though this is knitted by my own pattern, I'm still changing stuff, <laughs> which is ugh, annoying, but well, yeah. So first of all, um, I've been changing the chart, so there's supposed to be like a little star here. Um, change that in the color work chart. Um, second, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> moving up and down between sizes, um, doing starting at medium, going to large, and back again. It, <sighs> You know, 
just want a slightly different fit. I think. So I've gotten pretty far. I just need the bottom rip and I need the sleeves. Yay, sleeve island. <laughs> Um, and I might actually be doing like a little bit of color work at the, the bottom as well because I still have like almost half a skein of the dark blue. So, yes. Changing patterns. Oh my god. This is kind of a sample in a way as well. Anyway, so the yarn I'm using here is um, Triskillian Skilfing DK. So, you might have seen me raving about Triskillian on social media lately. Well, you know, I'm not getting paid for it or anything. I just love his yarn. Like, Carthen is amazing. He's an artist. And especially like this blend, which the Skilfing DK, it's um, BFL and Scotland, I think. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> I should have looked this, this stuff up before I started talking about it. So, um, you might see there's like a... A subtle subtle sheen which is like the dark gut blend in there it's really gorgeous it's really soft it's warm in just the right way and it's amazing um, so yeah that's the same yarn that this sweater is is made in um, this is my bandit pattern that I released at Ember Yarn Fest but it was actually a collaboration with Triskelin so yeah yes so working on it I hope to be finished soon, but now, you know, the weather's turned, so it's getting warmer and then I'm not that much in a rush getting this one done so I can wear it. So let's see how that goes. <coughs> Sorry. Another thing I'm working on is, well, as I mentioned, the weather has turned. It's getting warmer, so I want it like a summer thingy. So. I started this top, which has um, like the round yoke with something is really in right now. And you know, I was thinking I need a top with echo flowers lace. So <clears throat> surprise, yeah, echo flowers for the yoke. It was kind of fiddly um, working out that chart because, and I'm I'm gonna have to. Um, change it as well for some of the like the smaller sizes so this is like me size medium um, and like the construction of this is that first you do like a provisional cast on here under the lace and you work um, the lace bottom up because um, else the flowers will be turning down I want them to turn up so you work the lace bottom up and then you do decreases um, towards the neckline and bite it off. And I use like an eye cord bind, bind up here. Um, yeah, and then you unpick those stitches and you start working down for the body and as well for the sleeves. You can do long sleeves. I am planning on making like short sleeves, so there might just be a little bit of ribbing or like a belt or something. I'll I'll see. Um, I'll I'll decide as I go along. So yeah, as I mentioned, I might need to change some things about the chart for the smaller sizes because this in a size medium, the instructions are exactly perfect to get like the length for, for the armhole depth. So if I were to um, use the same chart for sizes small and extra small, the armhole, like it would become way too low um, for those sizes. So I, I really want that to be, um, to be a good fit for those sizes as well. So let's see how that goes. Um, it might be some fiddling with stuff. Um, the yarn I'm using here is Iser. Um, I was thinking I might have a skein somewhere around here. <laughs> well, it's um, Iser um, Marilyn and Bomelin. So Marilyn is a blend with wool or merino and linen and um, the Bomelin is cotton and linen. So yeah, this was it. Um, Bomelin and it's, um, there we go, uh, cotton and linen blend. 
Um, and then I'm holding that together with Marilyn, which is a merino and linen or flax blend. Um, yeah, so these two held together. Perfect for summer, I hope. Um, the two yarns are both fingering weight, so held together, they kind of amass to a DK weight ish. So it's a pretty quick knit, and yeah, looking so much forward to having finished. Get it to testing and get it out. Hopefully, um, before it gets too warm, we'll want to knit it still. Um, a third project I wanted to show you is my temperature blanket. So I designed this thing. So, you know, for the temperature blanket, you have this, um, so you register the temperature for each day. And then you knit like one stripe in the color of that you have designed to, like that temperature range. Um, so I've, I've been looking a lot of that, like around the, the year change, so around New Year's, a lot of those kind of projects are popping up because people get inspired, um, which I totally understand. I mean, I got inspired as well. Um, but most of those um, things they show are um, just plain garter stitch stripes or chevrons or something like that. So I designed something that's both chevrons and stripes. So this is going to be huge. Um, it's going to be um, 140 centimeters in width. Um, and the length I calculated to be around two meters. <laughs> it's going to be a sizable blanket. Nice and squishy and warm. Um, yeah, so I am working, I'm registering the highest and the lowest and the average temperature each day. So I'm working by the lowest ones and it started out with a lot of green. And I was thinking, oh my god, January is so green. Like, that was my, um, between 5 and 10, you know. Um, and then all of a sudden, February and then March and April, it started getting cold. So we've got the... This is just below freezing. Um, where did I say? That green, ordinary green, is between um, zero and five degrees. And the lighter green, you have one stripe there, that's above, above five, between five and 10. And that's Celsius we're talking here. Um, the light blue is um, between minus five and zero. The darker blue is between minus 10 and minus 5, and then there's a very, very dark one. I've got one stripe, which is um, between minus 10 or minus 15 and minus 10. I think it was actually exactly minus 10 day of the lowest temperature. So all the white we've got in here, that's zero flat. Um, and there's a lot more of that than I had anticipated. So, yeah. So right now, um, even though, as I said, the temperatures are climbing upwards or changing, um, it's still like the, um, the colors I recorded for March, like end of March, start of April, it's still like in the dark green or light blue range. So it's kind of, yeah, it, it's not going to get much warmer, but then again, it's the lowest temperature, um, so even though it's 15 degrees during the day, which it is today, um, the night might still be just on freezing. So, yeah. I'm very much behind, by the way. This is, I think I've got like the beginning of April, so I'm already, or I've been two weeks behind for a long time now. I'll catch up, no worries. It's a nice um, TV project whenever I um, need to kind of yeah, relax a bit, watch TV a minute. All right, let's talk about dyeing, dyeing yarn. Um, so Thursday, Hohi came out, Hohi Locatelli um, came out with her Begging Point shawl pattern. And gosh, I'm 
so much on that. I just really want to know that. And I don't have like any faves or anything. I know there's tons for sale out there and I might have ordered one or two. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> don't tell anyone. But I also tried to dye a fave. So <laughs> I went into the kitchen uh, Thursday evening, the dyeing kitchen, and I dyed up this fade, which, well, I just wanted a gray fade and you know me, my favorite color is blue. If anyone knew, um, <laughs> so I want I just happened to put some blue in there as well. So I'm not sure, like the, the light might not be perfect for this, but this is it. Um, I'm not 100% happy uh, because. I don't think it's so fadish, and I really wanted the dark one to be darker. But I know where I went wrong. Um, what happened is the base I chose to dye this on is my cotton wool base, which is 50 50 cotton and wool. Um, and because of the cotton content, like I've been using acid dyes here, um, the acid dyes don't. I, what's the word for that? They don't react as well to the cotton as, or bind as well to the cotton as they do to the protein fibers. So that's a protein and cellulose fiber thing. Um, so yeah, the cotton is pretty hard to dye properly and especially like adding speckles and such. Um, so let me show you this one. I did manage to get some speckles on there, um, but if you take a close look at, show you something good here, some of those darker areas, um, you'll see that the yarn is pretty heathered. Um, you see that ooh, over there, it's heathered, which is um, because of the cotton content. So. It's really pretty, and I really love this base. Um, it's it's light and airy and good for summer. I mean, wool with cotton in it is is something I'm very fascinated with, and I want to use more. So yeah, eh, my kind of um, yeah succeeded fade though. I mean, it's still a fade, right? It's from grey to blue, and now it's completely the opposite. Ah, fade. <laughs> yeah, so I might be uh, making the fading point sure. I don't know yet. It's a lot of knitting. It's five skeins of fingering weight. It's gonna take ages, and yeah, it's gonna take ages. There's so much else I want to know, like designs and stuff. Yeah, so let's see. I've got some um, some footage for you as well, which I'll insert here um, <laughs> uh, about the dyeing I've been doing today. So uh, this morning I did a little bit of natural dyeing with avocado, and I prepared a walnut shell out as well. So yeah, here you go. Enjoy. Hey yeah, I am going to dye with avocado today. So I did prepare something. I prepared the dye stock here. This is um, the avocado shells. I think it's five avocado shells with, or five half avocados. Um, with water, it's been boiling for an hour yesterday, um, yesterday evening. So it's cooled overnight and now I'm gonna strain it.
going to put a bit of this in the dye pod. I've got two dye pods running here. Now it just needs to get to a ball uh, for the colour to set and let's see how it looks in a moment. I'm going to put on a little bit of uh, walnut shell dyeing. So I've got a lot of walnut shells here, which um, is from the husband of a friend of mine. Um, so kind of a relative. He's been eating a lot of walnuts. <laughs> So he gave me all the shells, and I don't know if it's going to be anything, but let's see. So... Putting in a bunch of shells, so I've got my very large pot here. And then I'm just going to fill that up with water. And I'm putting it to a boil. Bringing it to a boil. Blood on it. I'll um when it boils, I'll let it boil for about an hour, and then I'll cool it. I'll be dying with this tomorrow. So meanwhile, avocado dying. Look at these partially submerged, just because I like experimenting. And this as well. I have some outside of the dye pot. About what is it? Twenty centimeter, eight inches. Let's see how this goes. In here I've got yesterday's dyed yarns. Put them in a washing bag, in a laundry bag. I'm going to give them a wool wash, gentle one. Um, making sure that the spin isn't too bad. I'm gonna start then. See you in about 40 minutes. So let's get into the actual like kitchen or food. Um, so yeah, today I've, um, it's Saturday today by the way, um, I've been doing a lot of stuff in the kitchen. I started out early morning because I just had this idea. Like, I saw a photo on Instagram of a cake um, made out of uh, Himbeersnitter, so that's like raspberry slices. It's a pretty Danish cake, I think. It's a cookie um, with like two um, layers of cookie with um, raspberry jam in the middle and icing on top. Um, I was thinking, oh my god, <laughs> I want to eat those. 
<laughs> I know. So, yeah, they, they had layered the cake, like a lot of layers with raspberry between and icing on top. It was nice. It was really nice. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to bake this. And we've got a lot of rhubarb in the, in the freezer from last year, which um, my husband loves rhubarb. It's it's kind of funny. It's like his favorite well, fruit or vegetable, whatever it is. Um, so I was thinking, well, let me make like those raspberry slices using rhubarb instead. So rhubarb slices. So I shopped around a bit on the internet to find um, a recipe for the good um, kind of cookie layers, and I think I succeeded. Um, and then I made like a, a rhubarb jam by uh, boiling some of those um, frozen pieces of rhubarb that we have um, together with a bit of sugar, a bit of lemon, a bit of vanilla until it was like a very thick mass and then I put a little bit of cornstarch in there just to make sure it was really like solid um, so it wouldn't like um, run out of um, the whole mix. Um, yeah. I baked those cookies and glazed it with, um, or glazed iced it with an icing made of powdered sugar and a little bit of raspberry juice because when I was at it, I was thinking, I could just as well make some <laughs> rhubarb juice. I could just as well make some rhubarb juice. Right. So, yeah, so it was, I've got my rhubarb fizz right here yeah so this is also basically rhubarb from the freezer boiled together with water so i had 200 grams of rhubarb um for de diesel liter um water um about 60 grams of sugar i guess and then um the juice from one and a half lemon and I just boiled it down until I was thinking, ah, it's not really juicy anymore. <laughs> and then I um, pushed it all through a sieve. Um, so I actually got this really lovely rhubarb um, red juice out of it. And it was very strong. So I uh, mixed it up with uh, fizzy water. We call it Danish water in Denmark. It's got nothing to do with Danish water, I guess. But it's sparkly, sparkly water, right? Yeah. So it's really good. And yeah, we're having those rhubarb slices with our coffee or tea this afternoon. I did have a little taste. It was really good. So, yes. Um, yeah, so I'll put a link in the show notes to um, the recipe I wrote up. So what, what I did, I wrote that up and put it on the blog. So, um, yeah, you can see that there as well. And make them if you want. So another thing I really wanted to tell you about is um, my reading. So... As some people might know, I am very often reading while I'm knitting because I kind of, yeah, I feel I have to do something. I mean, only knitting is not enough. Only reading is not enough. Only watching TV is not enough. I need to combine stuff. So, yeah, multitasking master. Um, so, yeah, I do read a lot of books. I kind of, at some point, like, forced myself to like not look at my knitting while I was knitting, which I think I've mastered that pretty well, at least for pretty simple, like garter stitch, stockinette, um, both stockinette, reverse stockinette, um, texture patterns. Um, it's pretty easy, especially as I tend to, when I purl, I tend to flip my stitches so they sit differently on the needle. So. When I then come to them again, I can actually feel <laughs> what stitch that was because it's it sits differently. So I've I've really learned to like feel um, what kind of stitches are coming up. Um, 
which is really great because I can read books. Um, not the most complicated ones though. Um, so there's a lot of <laughs> shitty fiction I'm reading. Uh, but there are also some really good ones. And what I'm currently reading, so I am a huge fan of fantasy and sci-fi. So currently, um, well, I went to the US in February um, for a work trip and I bought eight books. No, not eight books, 10 books, 12 books, a lot of books. Because um, books are so much cheaper in the US and actually I prefer reading in English. So yeah, I bought a lot of books and <laughs> we're in the middle of April right now. I've got like one and a half to go and I just like zip through them because um, they're good like <laughs> I have a hard time not reading them because they're really good so yeah so what I'm reading right now among other things is um, this brick um, the inheritance trilogy by N.K. Jemison um, She's a, well, I wouldn't say she's a very new writer. She's kind of new to me. Um, this is three books, by the way. Um, I'm halfway through them. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's really great so far. Um, I discovered this writer when um, my husband gave me some books for Christmas. So he gave me this um, trilogy from N.K. Jemison as well. Um, the fifth season, um, what's it called? Oh yeah, I'm, they're upside down. Sorry about that. There we go, here. Fifth season, the Broken Earth series. Um, so fifth season, up here's the first one, then Ob Obelisk Gate and Stone Sky. They're really good. And if you just want to try it out, Read the fifth season. It's got surprises for you. It's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it, there's a bit of like magic kind of stuff going on, supernatural powers. Yay! Fantasy. Really good. So it was actually very well um, caught by my husband that I had not read these books yet and um, I would like them. Um, so yeah, I, I also read a lot of books on my iPad, so I, I buy them online um, as ebooks, write them and read them there. So yeah, he could just as well have missed that I already read those because there's yeah, a ton of stuff out there. But I just love these and I zip through them within like a week or so. <laughs> or three weeks. <laughs> um, so yeah, and they left a lot of food for thought. Um, there's a lot of good, like, relationship stuff, social, blah -de blah Um, main characters of N.K. Jemison's books are, um, women. So, yeah. <laughs> Feminist-ish literature. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah. Really good. Check her out, N.K. Jemison. She's awesome. She's won, like, all these prizes for, well, especially this trilogy and um, a couple of other books as well. So, yeah, really good sci-fi writer. Fantasy. <laughs> this is not sci-fi. It's fantasy. In the other extreme. <laughs> so, a bit of, like, knitting-related books. Um, I recently, like, when I heard about Netsonic's Stranded Colorwork Playbook um, being a pre-order, um, I couldn't help myself, I had to pre-order it straight away because I also have her, um, sorry, just looking at the bookshelf here, um, here, Stranded Colorwork Sourcebook, I, I have that as well. I did a class with her in Edinburgh two, three years ago, I guess, at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. 
she's amazing. Like, she's so inspirational. She's got, like, these amazing things um, going on. And I felt like doing color work, which I don't do that much. Um, so, yeah. When this was up for pre-order, I ordered it straight away. Um, and it arrived last week. So, I ordered the playbook and the coloring companion. So, the playbook is a lot about, like... Inspiration and things that are happening out there with, with color work. Um, out on Instagram, for instance, there's like this whole story about people sending each other knitted postcards, um, inspired by something in their home. So it's it's pretty nice. Um, and then the coloring companion is like an extra to color. Um, if you want. So for some of the patterns in there, um, there's like these blank pages where you can put in um, the colors you want to use to take a look at um, how they would look with different colors. And it's, I really like it because coloring! I need to get out my coloring pencils. Okay, so it's a little bit later now and I've been editing <laughs> a lot of the vlog, um, this first episode. It's a lot more work than I thought, <laughs> but um, it's fun and I'm learning some new stuff. So video editing, I don't know if that's a career path for me. I think I'll keep to like knitting and designing and yarn and the digital marketing. <laughs> Side job, of course. I really hope my manager isn't watching this. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, that's it for me. And um, I very much hope that you've enjoyed all my chattering um, <laughs> and um, all I've shown you. And, uh, yeah, please leave a comment below under the video. Um, you can also get in touch with me. Um, I'll leave my contact info on social media. You can follow me on Instagram, go to website, Ravelry, you know, all those, Facebook, <laughs> all those kind of things. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and um, joining me this first time around. And uh, I hope I will have the time and the energy to do more of these if you guys would like to see them. So. Thank you so much. Bye.